Well, you deal with uh, rascals like Craig Sager, you've got to be on your toes. You take this and you burn it. It's not any part I can keep. No nice suit you got on there. Easter pass, though. Easter already went by. Turnovers and slide field goals. What was the key? I think they were looking at your suit. Uh, what the hell you want me to do? I don't know. Jonathan Simmons. Players playing. You shoot and it goes in or it doesn't. How have you turned LeBron James into a perimeter player tonight, keeping him out of the paint? I have no clue. Bull doing his Craig Sager impersonation. <laughs> I'm just trying to see him just trying to dunk on me. He gonna lay it up at the end. He's just trying to dunk on me, Craig. Simply, we love you. We love you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. You make me look good, too. So we lost um, someone great in the basketball community. And if you watch basketball, then Craig Sager has been a big part of your life, watching any game that's been on national television. When people ask me who's my favorite analyst or who's my favorite reporters, Craig Sager has always been in that list. He's someone who's been quick on his feet. He's never had a boring interview. He's always been exciting. His, his talent and his suits have always shined through. And it's definitely really sad, you know, to anyone who's a fan of basketball, the fan of, you know, NBA, you're going to definitely miss Craig. And it's kind of sad that he won't be there to do those exciting interviews or have the players make fun of his suits anymore. But his talent and his work will definitely live on and we'll miss you, Craig. So sleep in peace. So stay tuned because you're watching Basketball Unfiltered. Um. 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 Today we're gonna do things a little bit different. We're gonna switch things up. We're gonna try to put to rest this little debate that I've been having. Who is your NBA MVP for the 2016 to 2017 season? I know it is early. It is not even all-star break yet. We are approaching the middle of the season. But to be honest, every season we usually pick an MVP. Like, yep, this is who I want to be MVP. Yup, this is who deserves to be MVP. Yup, this person is playing like they are the MVP of the league. Now, sometimes what happens is people make premature MVP decisions and it doesn't always work out to be what we think it is. Shaq and Steve Nash come to mind because till this day, I think we all agree that Shaq was robbed once or twice probably twice. Steve Nash. No. So, no. Was he true MVP or was he a sympathy MVP? No, he was a true MVP. Over me? Twice? <laughs> oh, get out of here. Hey, was that <laughs> get out of here. So, who was your MVP? I have two people in my mind that I've been like battling with. I literally don't know who to choose. I've been flip-flopping. I've been jumping on one bandwagon and then jumping on the next. It has been hard for me. I put a status on Facebook a couple of days ago that said that Russell Westbrook gets my vote for MVP. Because that's how I felt at the time. I felt like Russell Westbrook deserved to be the league's MVP. Now I don't know. Now I think it's hard. And I'm literally, I'm battling. Like, is it Westbrook? Is it Harden? I don't know. I'm confused. So we're going to go through their pros, we're going to go through their cons, we're going to go through what they do well, what they don't do well, and we're going to see if we can figure it out together. So you leave me your comments, and I will tell you how I feel, and let's see if we can come up with a unanimous decision. I know it's not going to be unanimous. I know everybody on here is going to have their own opinions, and I love that. That's why I love having these little chit chats, because you get to hear how I feel, and I get to hear how you feel. So let's see if we can work it out. We're going to do some research. We're going to look at some footage and we're going to definitely analyze Russell and James and see 
who is our league's MVP. So let's get into it. So when we look at Russell Westbrook, there are some things that Russell does absolutely amazing. Russell's probably the most athletic and gifted person that I've seen in the league in his size in a really long time. He reminds me of having a little bit of that Iverson edge to him where he's so small, but he's like a little firecracker. He's just like running all over the place. And and it's good. He has that edge. He has that grit. And I love that about him. So he's athletic. He's quick. He's really, really strong. So that's some of the pros we see about Russell straight off the bat. Like we know this about him. He helps his team's defense. When it comes to comparing him to James Harden, clearly we know that the better defender is Russell Westbrook. That's for a fact. The Warriors has more help in more game. Oh, Westbrook coming. I think that Russell's defense is actually really underrated. So we have some pros. Russell is athletic. He's quick. He's strong. He helps his team's defense. And clearly, obviously, he helps his team's offense. His team's offense is better with him on the court than it is with him off the court. Slams it off. Timeout, Luke Walt. Westbrook gets to the rim again. Westbrook. Now he's a plus five. <laughs> when Russell is on the bench, the offense of his team suffers tremendously. And so that's already two, three huge pros. He's strong, he's athletic, he's quick, he helps his team's defense, and his team's offense is better with him on court than it is with him off the court. However, Russell has a few cons that we have got to talk about. He always has the ball. He has a lot of touches on the basketball. He holds the ball a lot. That can be a good thing or it can be a bad thing. Because if your shot selections are great and your efficiency rate is high, you always having the ball is better for your team. But Russell's efficiency wavers sometimes. His shot selections are erratic and sometimes very abrasive, and some of the times, they don't fall. Another con for him is his turnovers. Jesus. Russell averages almost six turnovers a game. I know that he's one of those go-at-it, go-hard players, and so it's hard for him to be precise and be a firecracker at the same time. I think he leads the league in turnovers. He's so good, but he plays so erratic at times. It's like, I don't know what Russell's going to do. It's like he's a loose cannon at times. If we could just reel it in and focus on being more precise and making sure that your shot selections are well thought out before they release from your hand, we could see a Westbrook that is untouchable. He's quick. He's athletic. He's strong. He can get through and cut through his defenders really, really well. If I'm matching him up against Harden, he is smaller than Harden, much shorter than Harden, and I think he weighs about 50 pounds less than Harden. So Harden can go through contact a little bit better than Russell can, but Russell still can cut through his lanes. I think it's better for Russell to have an open lane more than it is for Harden. Harden can cut through his defenders better than Russell can. Let's see what Harden does. Let's look at some film. For the dunk was Jai, but he was denied from behind. <laughs> uh, this guy had an incredible year. And he's in tremendous shape. And James Harden last year. Boy, he is so good with that Euro step. They had a number of guys who are not guys, players, yeah. players that could. Harden with the drive by and one. Great finish by James Harden. There's another dime drop by Harden to Capella. Five on the clock. You know that Russell Westbrook is almost averaging a triple-double if he's not averaging a triple-double already. And we know that James Harden is pretty much averaging a double-double. But what do they do better than each other in certain categories? We know that when it comes to offense, Russell and James are up there. We could probably say that they're at the same place. I don't know if I would give one the edge over the other. I think that when it comes to shot selections, Harden's shot selections are better. So if I was going to give offense to anyone, it would probably be Harden. And it's not by that much. It's literally by a little bit. Now, when it comes to defense, 
Damn it, Harden. Damn it. That man plays none. This are the guards and the intelligence of uh, Marcus. Rozier. Underneath. They're smart. Lopez blocks it. Chipped out to a flower. And a flower throws it into the and throws it down. Talk about serendipity. The ball hit Terry's back. And Felicio kind of bearing down on you. Rockets are fouled again. What do you go? McDermott trying to keep it alive. So I definitely cannot give defense to Harden. It has to go to Westbrook. If I'm going to compare one over the other, Russell's assists at times just feels like it's a 2K move that he just wants to do and he wants to be a little bit flashy. And so he throws it up there and he's just like, ooh, look, ooh, alley -oop. But it's not necessarily a play that he thought out. It looks like at times he doesn't even know what he's going to do when he comes up the court. It's just a spur of the moment thing, which is fine. Turnovers. They are the turnover kings. Harden's pass a little too long. Winchett is coming off the bench, but he can pass the ball like that right there. He nearly pulled it off of it. Harden lost it again. Wobbling happening right off the top of the show. Harden drives again. I can't give one, you know, choose one who makes less turnovers than the other. They both make way too many. Now, this one was a shock for me. Not too shocking, but I was like, hmm, that's interesting. When it comes to a field goal percentage, James Harden has a higher field goal percentage. His field goal percentage is 43.9. Russell's field goal percentage is 42.3. So James has a higher field goal percentage, not by that much. Like I've been saying, when it comes to offense, they are pretty much on the same level. But James has a slighter, higher field goal percentage. And I believe that he has lower field goal attempts than Russell. So that kind of goes to show you when it comes to efficiency, Russell is a little bit below James. And I've said this. I've said that Russell's efficiency is a little lower than Harden's because a lot of the times his shot selections are not good. It, he will have 36 points and make 36 attempts. Like, when it comes to three-point percentage, James is also leading Russell by a couple of percentage, not that much. So Harden is averaging a higher field goal percentage, a higher three-point percentage, and a higher free throw percentage. He's just a little bit more efficient than Russell, but they are pretty much up there. So at this point, it's just like, who do you choose? I don't know, people. This is what I'm asking you. I'm still confused. I still don't know who to choose, honestly. How about this? Whoever has the better team record by All-Star break should be MVP. So tell me who you choose. Let me know your opinion. We can talk about it down below in the comment section, whether it be on YouTube or whether it be on Facebook. Um, let's talk about it. You tell me what you think, who's your MVP and why. Don't just give me a name. Tell me why. And we can discuss it and let's talk about it because I don't know who I choose just yet. So you let me know who your MVP is and why, and let's talk about it and let's have some fun. Um.